Well, Maka, we have to start. How close to the hat-trick were you? Yeah, really close. I'm really disappointed I get the hat-trick. Um, obviously, got the two goals and the, the, the chance at the end there. I think, obviously, Rubens played a great ball. It's on my left foot. I was trying to get good contact on it. And I'm quite harsh on myself in terms of missing chances. I, I had one just before my first goal. I should do I should do better if I should score. I back myself to score them. Um, so I'm quite harsh on myself. But with that one, I think it's a good contact. And I'm two yards away from the defender. Uh, he's blocked it. I think he might have been going in. So really disappointed that I couldn't get that third goal to get the win. But I'll take the two goals in the point. Let's talk about the two goals in reverse order then. Unbelievable header um, for the second. Um, just talk us through it. What a fantastic assist from Sam. Yeah, unbelievable ball. Obviously, Sam came on and gave us that real energy. Um, and he put that cross in. And to be honest, I thought the defender was was going to head it. He was right in front of me. And he sort of jumped and, and missed it. So I react. Um, I had a couple of headers against Gator, which, like I say, again, I, I back myself to do better with. Um, I'm not known for my, for my heading, heading goals. Uh, I, I score more goals with my right and left foot. But, you know, when, when crosses like that come in, it doesn't matter what size you are or, or whatever. Um, you're going to score and it's a great ball the ball done everything for me and I just had to hit it in the bottom corner yeah, Great move for that one the, the first goal was much more of a predatory instinct sort of effort you took the shot early keeper off his line chance out of nothing really wasn't it? Yeah let's like say it, it, it came so quick after the the first chance he had um, so you don't really get to dwell on that first chance I, I got the chance straight away afterwards um, and yeah it, it was a bit of a strange one because the ball got played over the top and then the defender tried to intercept it it fell straight at me I was thought, rather than taking a touch, the, the keeper wasn't set. Um, he was moving across his line, so I was trying to get good contact on it and hit it quite early. And it, it sort of caught my guy a little bit, so I was happy to see that one go in. Back to the second one, your reaction was obviously was good. It was a good celebration, but there was obviously an intent from you and the team to get that ball back on that halfway line and try and go for the win. How much disappointment is there in the dressing room that we didn't get all three points today? Yeah, massive. He's seen the, the crowd after the second goal. He gave us that massive lift. Well, he gave us a lift after the first goal, really. Like, they're like the 12th man. Um, and in the second goal, we just thought we had so much momentum and, and energy going through the stadium. Obviously, we were two all. We had plenty of time trying to go and get the win. Yeah, like we say, we were really disappointed in there not to get the win. I think before the game, we knew we, we should be winning the game. Um, but to be 2 0 down with half an hour left or whatever it was, to show the character that we've got to, to come back to get a point. So I think in the end, we'll take a point. You've had some great moments already here at Meadow Lane. Obviously, scored against Forest in front of the cop, which was a great noise. Two goals in the last home game, two goals at this home game. How much would you love to get a goal on the road? 100% I've said it there. I, I take two goals every time I take over the white line at, at Meadow Lane, um, but I want to get off the mark away from home. You know, I, I've had two games where there's been chances in two games for me, so I'm really disappointed not to, to get on the score sheet in them two games. Um, but like I say, I, I'm sure it's going to come. Um, the, the chances we create as a team, um, I'm sure I'm going to get my goal away, away from home. You've just been mingling with a lot of fans there because you've gone and done the interviews in the, the three hospitality lounges. Do you feel the love from the Knots fans? Are you feeling a real part of this club? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think I think it's hard as a player not to sort of recognise social media and stuff like that. Obviously, I see my name a lot, but like I said, there's expectations on me. Um, I'm wearing the number nine shirt, which is obviously very famous at this club. And there's a lot of expectations from from, from the the fans and because the size of the club is massive. So yeah, I, I do feel that like that pressure on me. Um, but like I said before, I thrive on that pressure, and I think I'm feeling the love as well. And uh, it helped me every time I step on that pitch to to go and get the goals. Halifax away is always a tough prospect, no matter how they've started the season. How important is this week now to, to sort of regroup after what was a really, it's been a really hectic week, hasn't it? With a lot of travelling, heat and stuff like that. You know, get focused on, on, in on Halifax on Saturday and try and get three points on the board. Yeah, it's going to be a massive week, um, a week of recovery as well. We're, obviously, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have training on, on Tuesday and Wednesday, which will be really tough. Um, but it's, it's good to have that week pre preparation, really. Um, we've just had three really tough games and I think if you said to us obviously we want, to, we want to win games but to remain unbeaten in them games especially with two long travels as well that's a massive positive um, yeah Halifax away is going to be a really tough game you know you see how they did last season they were top top side and this is only a good point if we go on back up with a, with a win against Halifax so that's what we'll be able to do